Have you ever heard about the standard form of a number? Professor, what a scientific mind you have. I prefer completely other hobbies in my life. So, then today I'll tell you about it. No thank you. Still, listen to me. It is important. Really? Well then, next time you will definitely tell me about it. No, today. Wait. What are you saying, Professor? It's too hard to hear you for some reason. <laughs> Wonderful. You and your attention will be successfully hold. Here is a unique pedagogical approach, by the way. Standard form of a number is often used in various spheres of life, in science, especially in mathematics and physics. You simply cannot imagine how problematic it would be to write down, for example, the mass of the Earth if there wasn't the standard form of a number. How unwieldy and inconvenient it would be. Oh my goodness, Professor. Life would be a nightmare. Nothing funny about that. Look here. Mass of the Earth is 5.972 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms. We have written this number in standard form. Well done, Professor. You did a great job. If you hadn't... Untie the curtain. To write a number in standard form means that it must be written as a product of some number, let's take x and 10 to the power of n. The power n must be an integer, and x can be greater than or equal to 1, but it must be less than 10. It turns out that to write a number in standard form, you need to put a decimal point after the first digit, which is greater than 0, starting from the left. Then, you need to multiply it by 10 to the appropriate power. The number of positions a decimal point has moved is the power, which should be written next to the 10. Let's try some cute examples. Professor, my poor ears can't stand the way you speak about the examples. 542,000. We are looking for the first digit which is greater than zero starting from the left. Here it is. A sweet little five. We put a decimal point after it. We rewrite the rest of the numbers after the decimal point and multiply all this beauty by 10 to the fifth power. <sighs> Thus even after all our actions, the starting number isn't changed. 800. We put a decimal point after the first digit from the left, which is 8. So, we get 8.0. It is 8. And we multiply it by 10 to the second power. Write 1255.7 in standard form. We put a decimal point after the 1, rewrite all other digits, and multiply it by 10 to the third power. 0 0.0023. We put a decimal point after the 2, simply rewrite 3, and multiply the number we've got by 10 to the negative third power. 0 0.07. The decimal point must be placed after the 7 and we multiply it by 10 to the negative power of 2. We got, got it. it. The number of positions decimal point has moved is the power, which we should write straight next to the 10. Is it the end, Professor? Come on. What about the sign of the exponent? <laughs> if the number was big, for example, 800, and you made a small one out of it, 8, it is necessary to restore everything as it was before, multiplying the 8 by 10 to a positive power. On the other hand, if the number was small, for example, 0.7, and you made a big number out of it, 7. To return everything as it was before you need to multiply 7 by 10 to a negative power. Guys, you better listen to me. If you messed up, you should return everything as it was before. If you made the number smaller, then increase it with a positive exponent. And if you made the number bigger, then decrease it with a negative exponent. Hiccupy. I'll never cease to be amazed by your explanations. You better untie us. One more minute. I'll give you some homework. Why didn't I think of such a great way to pacify you before? Write the numbers in standard form. Those of you who haven't watched the last episode. Guys, first of all, do watch it. Secondly, I give you a hint. You will find correct answers by the link in the description. Good luck. See you in the next episode.